This is going to be a video on the world's scariest chemical weapons. Now, I've already talked about lots of chemical weapons in other videos, so this is going to be more like a recap video, where I go over some of the ones I think are the most frightening. Now, in a moment, I will take my gas mask off, because um, you'll obviously be able to hear me more easily with the mask off. So, let's go over the list. So I'm going to start with an actual non-lethal gas. Well, supposedly non-lethal gas, because I think that would be a good way to start the video. So, the reason I find CS gas so scary, and funnily enough it's not actually a gas, it's a fine particulate, but it can be dispersed like a gas, which is why it's known as CS gas, but I guess it's gas, um, is because it's legal to be used against civilians in most countries. Now, in lots and lots of nations, um, obviously, using chemical weapons against other countries and their soldiers is completely forbidden. It's a war crime. Using uh, chemical weapons against civilian populations is totally banned. It's a war crime. However, CS gas, when used against civilians um, in the act of police work or riot control, is generally considered to be A-OK. -okay. Now, CS gas, as it is an actual particulate, and it's basically what it does is once it's inhaled or it gets into your eyes, it causes extreme irritation to the eyes and your sort of nose and throat. So it causes coughing, uh, being very teary-eyed, sort of, you know, nausea, um, sneezing, everything like that. So basically it results in a very sore throat, um, you know, like I said, wet eyes and everything else. Now, the problem with CS is that if it was used outside in wide open areas, um, say just against rioters, uh, in theory it's totally safe. The issue is with CS is if it's used in confined spaces, it becomes far more potent and far more dangerous. Um, now, it obviously depends on the percentage used and the amount used, because CS is often used on soldiers when they're going through their respirator sort of confidence tests to show them their mask will work and protect them. However, that's generally very, very lo do low doses of CS, enough to make it quite painful to not have the mask on, but not enough to be dangerous. Now, the other issue is with CS as well, is if you're like me and have asthma or other kind of lung problems, CS can be fatal because it can trigger, you know, an uh, incredibly bad asthmatic reaction. It's also more dangerous against the elderly and children. Now, if you want to see what happens when CS goes wrong, look up the Waco siege. Now, as I said before, there's lots of conspiracies and controversies around the Waco siege, and I'm not interested in talking about those in this video. Um, I do not believe that the children deserve to die in that, regardless of what their parents may have done. However, the FBI pumped in for six hours loads and loads of CS gas into the building. CS gas is also incredibly flammable. So for six hours, children were literally tortured by a chemical weapon being sprayed into the building. And then the CS lit on fire, either from a spark inside a lamp, or maybe somebody deliberately started a fire, we will never know. The CS went up because it's flammable, and it burned everybody alive in the building who had not died from the CS at this point. So CS is absolutely horrible in the sense that it's a chemical weapon that's allowed for use and it's not banned. So, what will our next chemical weapon be on the list? I am now going to list phosgene gas. Now, phosgene, many people know what chlorine gas is from World War One. Uh, chlorine is very deadly in large numbers, but in smaller numbers it's a bit like CS. It's an irritant, it can cause damage. It's not normally fatal. Phosgene gas is far, far nastier. Small amounts of phosgene gas when inhaled can kill you. It basically destroys the linings of your lungs. Now, what makes phosgene even sort of nastier in a sense is it doesn't initially kill you always. Some people can inhale phosgene, feel a bit ill, but otherwise not too bad, and then a day later suddenly, you know, become very ill and die. So phosgene basically destroys your lungs from the inside out. A lot of chemical weapons do that, but phosgene is just particularly good at it. Now, 85% of the gas casualties from World War I were a result of phosgene gas. And remember, chlorine and mustard gas were also used in World War I. So phosgene was the far deadliest killer. So if you find out what the number of deaths are from gas in World War I, if you can find a good figure for that somewhere, think about 85% of those are from phosgene, then you'll understand just how dangerous phosgene is. Now, thankfully, a mask on its own is enough to protect you from phosgene. However, um, without a mask, and if you're exposed to it, and phosgene doesn't really have much of a smell to it, and it's not visible, and by the point you've smelt it, you've already inhaled a load of it, phosgene is, you know, going to be very deadly for that reason. The other thing that makes phosgene quite scary is it's very easy for people with a bit of chemical knowledge to make. Now, obviously, in this video, I'm not going to tell people how to do it, um, but that is what makes phosgene quite scary, is that if a terrorist group or whoever decided that they were going to use phosgene in an attack, 
um, they wouldn't need the same level of skill as they would for, for example, nerve agents. So, phosgene is incredibly deadly in small quantities. You can't really see it unless it's in massive quantities, and it only has a very faint smell, supposedly, of like mown grass or hay. Um, and then, you know, once you've inhaled it, within a day you could be dead, or, you know, maybe for the rest of your life you'll suffer with breathing problems from the damage phosgene has done to your lungs. So, phosgene is one of the deadliest chemical weapons that doesn't have any reaction with the skin. So next we're going to cover blister agents, the most famous being mustard gas, but there's an even nastier one called lewisite, which was developed after mustard. So mustard gas or sulfur mustard, it's basically a gas that when it comes into contact with the skin causes horrible blisters and like chemical burns to the skin. It also obviously destroys the eyes if too much gets into your eyes, and if you inhale it, of course, it damages the inside of your lungs. Now, mustard and lewisite are obviously fatal in big numbers if inhaled, because again, it destroys your lungs from the inside out. However, what makes them so scary is the fact that, obviously, through skin contact alone, they can just completely destroy your skin. Um, if you see pictures of people who have come into contact with mustard gas, their skin's all blistered and horrible. It looks like, you know, they've been attacked of acid or something like that. So you've got a weapon that horribly maims if it doesn't kill you. Um, and sadly, say you survived the mustard gas attack, as many people did, uh, you're probably going to die in the long run from skin cancers or other diseases developed from having your skin, you know, just horribly destroyed by the mustard. Now, lewisite is even nastier than mustard gas, primarily for the reason with lewisite that um, if it touches your skin it can cause kidney or liver failure through, due, due to the poisons, you know, that get into your skin that way. So the problem is, if you have your mask, that's not enough of mustard gas or lewisite. The mask will protect your eyes and your, you know, your lungs, but it's not going to protect your skin. So, you could have, your face might look okay, your lungs might still work and your eyes might work, so it's obviously better than nothing having the mask, but, you know, your skin could completely, basically, blister and peel off, and then you could die weeks, months, or years later from poisoning effects brought on from, um, the mustard gas or lewisite. Now, an interesting thing to note, because this does get brought up several times, is sulfur mustard, which is the name for, proper name for mustard gas, was actually used later as a chemotherapy and skin cancer treatment drug. Obviously much better things have come along now, but because of how it can damage cells, it's actually, you know, can be used to fight cancer, which is sort of interesting. So I guess there's some silver lining to, you know, some of these horrid weapons. So what's the scariest of all the chemical weapons? Nerve agents. A mask alone will do nothing to protect you from a nerve agent. Similar to mustard gas and lewisite, which cause damage to the skin, nerve agent is absorbed through the skin, and it's also obviously absorbed through the eyes and through inhalation. To protect yourself from nerve agent, you need full body nuclear, biological and chemical gear on, or CBRN gear. So the full on NBC suits, you know, either the rubber ones or the um, sort of fabric-y type ones impregnated with charcoal. The mask itself will do nothing to protect you other than your respiratory system and your face and eyes. If you had a mask on and no other protection, the nerve gas will get you, it will just be a little bit slower. Now, the good thing about nerve agent, it's very difficult for terrorists or any group like that to make it properly. It was tried by a Japanese cult in the 90s when they attacked the uh, Tokyo, underground, Tokyo Underground of Sarin, but that Sarin wasn't properly made, so what actually ended up happening is thousands of people were made ill but survived, and only about a dozen or so people died which is obviously still bad, but the reason being that it wasn't pure sarin. If it was pure sarin, the thousands that were, uh, you know, injured by it would have probably been thousands dead. Sarin and other nerve agents are really scary chemical weapons. So, with nerve agents, you have first had a series called the G-Agents, which were developed by Nazi Germany, which was Tabern, which was the weakest, sarin, and then Soman. Each of those would kill more efficiently with less skin contact or less inhalation. Obviously, they do kill quicker through inhalation or being absorbed into the eyes, but in general, you know, they'll get you either way if you're exposed to a decent amount of it. And the really scary thing about nerve agents is as they get deadlier, less and less is needed to kill you. So, with uh, something like Tabern, a few grams is needed to kill you, which isn't very much if you think of how much a few grams would weigh on a scale, um, and that would be through skin contact. Through in inhalation, you know, less is more, essentially, and you're really, really doomed. Now, after World War II, there was a new series of nerve agents developed called the V-Agents, which came to um, its conclusion with an agent called VX, which is one of the most de deadly substances on the Earth. Now, VX, something like one gram of VX can kill 500 to 1,000 people through skin contact alone, several thousand if they all inhaled it. Now, because of how nerve agents work, it's very unlikely that each person's going to get a very measured small dose. It's probably going to be lots is used in an area that completely wipes out everybody and every living thing in an area 
you know, like that. Some uh, some nerve agents are persistent as well, which means they can linger around in puddles and things like that for ages, so lots of decontamination of the area is needed as well. Now, supposedly, and I've covered this in videos before, Russia has a series of agents called the Novichok agents, which are meant to be more deadly than VX, or maybe easier to produce. Uh, the jury's out on whether or not it's real because of all the sort of fake news and scaremongering media around Novichok. It's hard to work out what's real and what's not because lots of sources, um, you know, argue with other sources saying how real it is. But nerve agents to chemical weapons are like what uh, hydrogen bombs are to nuclear weapons. Something, you know, relatively small can kill such an insane amount of people. It really is frightening, and the level of protection you need and the amount of early warning you need for protection against nerve agents, you know, is insane, most people would not survive it. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this video as much as, you know, stuff like this isn't really enjoyable, but it's morbidly fascinating, about the scariest chemical weapons. And as I said, we'd start off with something like CS, because as much as it's not deadly on purpose, it's meant to be a less lethal agent, CS gas or CS powder is, you know, often used against civilians, um, some of them who may be medically unfit for riot control reasons and other such, you know, uses as that. Then you've got something like phosgene, which is incredibly deadly through inhalation, but luckily it won't really get you through skin contact. Um, and again, you've not got much warning it's coming. Then you've got mustard gas and lewisites, the blister agents. They'll do a lot of damage if you inhale them, but they can cause fatal, um, you know, diseases through skin contact alone, or just, you know, make you miserable for the rest of your life with, you know, permanently scarred skin and everything else, and lots and lots of physical pain. And then we have the nerve agents, which are just incredibly efficient at killing almost everyone where they are dispersed. So, hopefully, like I said, you've enjoyed this video as morbid and fascinating as it is in some ways, but those, in my opinion, are the scariest of the chemical agents. Of course, there's lots of other horrible chemical weapons, but those are the ones that, when I think of nasty chemical agents, are really the ones that spring to mind for me.